yesterday arguably was one of the biggest nights in African entertainment as we had the Africa Magic Viewer Choice Awards, the ninth edition. And as we all know, the AMVCAs are known for fashion, the pomp, the pageantry, but also rewarding those that work in front and behind the camera. And there were quite a number of surprise wins. Um, it's a mixed bag. We have some that were voted for by the voting public across Africa, as well as some that were decided by an independent academy Audrey. So to discuss the awards, I have with me Damilari Babatunde, um, who runs, I believe, a film media outlet, um, a film journalist. Damilari, it's good to have you. Uh, Damilari, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Thanks for being here. Welcome to Robin Minds. So let's go right into the AMVCAs. Um, did you um, expect anybody to win and didn't win? Were there any surprises? And um, what was the biggest um, win for you of the night? Yes. Um, so like you said, there's always um, surprises and, um, of course, upsets whenever there's an award ceremony. And for the AMVCs that went down last night, um, we had Anikula who taken six nominations, uh, six wins out of its um, 16 nominations. And of course, Brother who taken five wins out of its 11 nominations. But the biggest upset is Battle on Booker Street, which had 10 nominations but had zero wins last night and of course we also have um, shanty town that had 11 nominations and just one win so for battle on poker street right it is very interesting because that film is the highest person nollywood film at the box office with over 600 million naira and you know for the film to not get an award out of its 10 nominations it's very, very much a big um, upset. There were also some categories such as uh, best actor, which of course had some very, very, um, you know, uh, feedback in terms of um, the Anikula Kudid actor, Kunle Remy, not getting a nomination. And of course, when uh, the final list was revealed uh, last night to be Bakari Tukum, uh, the best actor um, for a drama in, uh, in that category. And then, of course, you have um, a new category that was included, which is the social media best content category, um, where Ellen Zanam and uh, Kiki, the one for uh, a, a short film that they did called Past the Future, right? And then, of course, that category... I'd like to, I'd just like to jump in here. Um, you mentioned um, the, the best film and the best actors. Um, and you mentioned the upset. I want to go back to that upset of um, Battle on Booker Street. Um, for several editions, we've seen Funke Akindele come out to win the best comedy um, actress. And this time around, I believe it was Bimbo Ademoye who won. And she, it was such a surprise to her. She didn't have any speech um, prepared. Would you consider that an upset? And is that um, due to a change in the voting generation? Would you say that we're seeing more maybe young people support young actors? Um, because everybody was expecting, like you said, to at least see Funke win another award and that movie because it's the highest grossing movie of all time in Nollywood. Awesome. Um, I think you said it there, right? Again, we also need to understand the backstory of uh, Bimbo Adimoy. Bimbo Adimoy has put a lot of uh, very interesting projects in a couple of years, and she hasn't gotten any nomination for AMVC. So this year, when her name was listed um, in the category for best um, actress in a comedy, of course, all of our fans stood up and raised noise and raised interest on this babe must win uh, this this uh, particular category. And of course, last night when she won it, of course, nobody knew she was going to beat uh, Fuka Akindele, like you said, because she has been winning this award back to back with a very, very strong uh, base across not, not just in Nigeria, but across Africa. She has a very, very strong um, voting base. So to see people adding the best uh, in that category, I think clearly you can say it is a very, very uh, interesting surprise as well as an upset, <laughs> if, if you want to put it that way. Yes. Now let's, let's move to the um, best actor, best actress. I know that's hotly um, contested and a lot of people go out on social media to engage their fan base to ensure they deliver the votes. Toby Bakre um, winning best actor and um, Osasi Godaro winning best um, actress for the second year running. Did that come as a surprise to you? And who did you think was, um, who did you think were going to um, pick up those gongs? 
Yes, um, like you said, very, very hotly contested categories. Um, we had uh, to be Bakari, we had um, Chidimo Piano from Shantytown, we even had uh, Blossom Chip from Detroit. Those were like the top three favorites to win in that category. But of course, uh, because of Toby's Bakari's new uh, project, which is like Gangs of Lagos, it still has sort of like a very high um, interest and attention and noise to be able to pull um, that voting category to his side. Again, right, I think that um, uh, like all the actors that were listed in that nominations, they absolutely deserved um, to, to win that award. But of course, uh, to be back, I was able to pull through and win the best actor. Now, let's move on to best actress. That is a very, very interesting upset because um, if you look at that nominations, right, we had Nsengbe Etim from Shantytown. We also had Iniedo um, from Shantytown. I think those were like the two favorites um, to win in that particular uh, in that particular category. And Osasi Godaro, uh, who also won last year, came up again this year and absolutely um, took that award. It was a huge um, upset. Like you said, a lot of people were commenting on Twitter on how that category, uh, that award, rather should have gone to another favorite of, of theirs. But I think, like you said, this is like a popularity contest, and whoever runs the best campaign or whoever is able to pull the highest um, votes is the person you know um, that that wins the this particular category. So yes, a lot of people, a lot of audiences were not expecting themselves to win, but at the end of the day, she became winner, and she's now the best actress um, in a drama for ABC 2023. Now let's look at the biggest awards. I think um, will be the film, the best film, as well as the best director. Um, do you feel that Anikola? Well, what's the best film? I believe that's decided by the jury. So it has nothing to do with um, a pop popularity contest. And then we also had um, the best director, which went to the director of Brotherhood. Um, do you feel that? these represents, given the just the amount of work that has come out in our cinemas, um, on streaming platforms, on television, that this is the best of African um, filmmaking? Um, yes, so I want to clarify there are two um, very big categories last night. There was one best overall movie, and then there's another of best West African movie. So for best West African movie, that was one uh, by Brother, who uh, was produced by Jade Shola Oshiberi and directed by Luke Mann. Ali. And then, of course, Anikulako won uh, Best um, best Horror Film, which is um, Anikulako. Without a doubt, those two projects were one of the strongest um, non projects that came out um, last year, and they are absolutely deserving in Darwin. But again, if you look at from a directing um, standpoint, you have Luke Monali, who's one of the hottest um, new generational talents coming out from Africa. He's a Ugandan filmmaker who was tapped to direct um, this action blockbuster. Of course, the film did well in cinemas, it did over 300 million in cinemas, and everybody absolutely loved it. So again, it just points to the fact that um, it's an exciting time for Lukman, especially, who is a Ugandan uh, filmmaker, you know, coming here to the Nigerian film industry to direct a film, and of course, he's even taking home uh, this win. And of course, Anikola Kukunia of Nayo, of course, he has been there um, for more than a decade. He knows what he's doing. So to be honest, I wasn't surprised uh, that he took home uh, the best um, overall film. And I, if you I notice, think that... That synergy of um, seeing more African countries coming together on a project, I mean, um, Luke Monali, that is um, based in uh, Uganda, also his film um, that he directed, Brotherhood, won the best film in West Africa. And I believe it was um, the Southern Africa category that had Elvis Chooks, who is a Nigerian, coming up on stage to receive the award. Um, unfortunately, that's all we can take on um, this segment. Um, thank you very much again, Dami Larry Baba, today for your contributions on Robin Minds. You're still tuned in to Robin Minds. Before the break, we discussed some of the upsets and the expectations of the African Magic Viewers' Choice Awards, the AMVCAs, which held its ninth edition yesterday, arguably um, the biggest platform for rewarding filmmakers and TV um, practitioners in Africa. Now we're going to move to the pizzazz, the pomp and the pageantry 
the fashion. Um, we all know that everybody dresses to the nines. And just going through different social media platforms, there were a lot of hits and a lot of misses. But to discuss the very iconic, strange, beautiful, handsome, weird looks on the black carpet, I have with me a media personality and self-confessed <laughs> industry baby. I like that. Um, Ayolawa, welcome to Robin Mike. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And we also have joining us virtually celebrity stylist, um, Style Infidel. Welcome to Robbing Minds. So let's go straight Hi, into the conversation. Um, we have um, Style Infidel. Can you hear me? I believe, oh, yes, you you're now um, tuned in to Robin Minds. Welcome. Let's go straight into the hits and the misses. So I'll start with you, Aya, and let me know your top three looks, uh, male and female, and then Style Infidel, I'll come to you. So also get ready your top three female looks and top three male looks. Okay, um, I'll, start, I'll start with the females. Okay. Um, off the top of my head, the first look that comes to mind is the host, Zozi. Okay, her um, first dress? A second, a second dress. A second the dress, the, um, okay. Gold and the black outfit. Oh, my okay. God. Okay. Um, from when I saw the picture of the outfit, when, once you walked across on stage, everything about the outfit looked like heavily. It looked fantastic. It looked like it was made for her. So shout out to Lareda Silva Ajayi for that outfit and shout out to Damola, the stylist. Okay. Um, second outfit that comes to mind is um, Venita. It's Venita Pofuri. Okay. Um, so, I believe she was channeling this um, Catwoman yeah, vibe. Yeah, this Catwoman um, black vibe. Silver yeah, hair. really cool actually. I, I think all three um, award season from all the um, shows that EMVC has put together, she, I feel like she has really brought it. She was very, very prepared for EMVC this yeah, year. She she won the um, best, best dress, dress for, the yeah, for the culture night day, yeah. in the pink, um, I mean, yes, robo outfit. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so shout out. I was kind of expecting something very fantastic from her. She like she delivered fantastic. Yeah, it was so. a very edgy, edgy look. look. And your third for the females? Um, I thought for the females, I would say we would have to go to Sharon Oja. Okay, that so, was a white number. A white, a white number, a two piece. So shout out to Damola again. He started that style, the um, host. Killed a fantastic look. It was very Sharon. I love how like her hair was cut short. It wasn't given the full, like, you know, European wig and everything. Like, everything was perfect. This accessories, silver, um, diamond, like, it was perfect, honestly. Like, when I saw the look, I was like, yeah, this is perfect. Um, just before you go to your top three male looks, okay. I'd like to hear from Style Infidel on your top three female looks. Style uh, Infidel, can you hear me? Go on. I can hear you clearly, clearly. My top three looks, right? Female. Okay, my top three looks. No, um, first on my list would have to be um, Inse Ikbe Etim in Toji Foye. I think she looked mm -hmm. um, phenomenal. She looked like a red carpet familiar. She took the 50 silhouette, took something from Charles James, took something from Zach Cozen, and delivered red carpet glamour. That is the glamour we live for. That is the glamour we want on the carpet. Well thought out, well curated. Number two on my list will definitely be someone I style, Toby Bakery. And Toby Bakery was spotted in a two in a two-tone talks by Samuel Cray. And I think we pushed beyond the norm. We put him in a pink suit, which is not what you would normally gravitate towards on the red carpet. But most times we we'll always get to look at things that photograph well, because you never can trust the red carpet paparazzi. So we picked pink. We highlighted it with black, and it looks good. Number three on my list would be Nana Akodua in the Vamp Tour. Mm -hmm. And oh, she brings her A game every damn time. Sorry for using the D word. But she brings her A game every time. Color. I, I, I believe that uh, Nana's outfit was very futuristic, very edgy, almost robotic. Uh, with the, very the sci-fi. She gave us sci-fi. She gave us... It was sci-fi was artistic it was contemporary the fit was immaculate she looked a vision in that divine couture piece and i'm still really surprised she didn't make best dress although yes they said they have their terms and conditions and blah 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 but those are my top three okay um we'll come back to your other looks because i know you mixed the male and the female looks interesting um 
to mention um, Toby Bakre's look. I enjoyed that I look. Really, and another actually, person's um, look that I like, um, picking up on what Style Infidel said about being able to use um, tones of pink, pink and yeah. purple like on the red carpet. Um, top top Tere Tere Tere. Tere. Yeah. Yes, I think um, yeah. he he really did a great job. A fantastic um, job. So let me hear. I hope I've not um, no, honestly, pushed his, no, his, <laughs> Who was your top three for the He's He's part of my top three. Like, I, mean, I feel like Top Tadella brings it every time to the MVCA. I remember last year, he wore like a green outfit. Outfit, and I was like, oh my god, this this is a, this is a best dressed outfit. This is a best dressed male outfit. So um, I just hope that one day, gets, like the flowers that he deserves based on his outfit. So top of are definitely. Um, Timmy San, Timmy okay. San Emmanuel. He wore a corset. Wore a corset. So like, I really really like the vibe of that outfit. I love everything about the outfit. It's different. It's not what you usually find on the AMVCA. He was pushing the envelope. Was pushing. Was definitely pushing the envelope. Um, the only other person I would expect to see something like that from is Daniel Agri, and he didn't come for the MVCA this yes. year. So like, it was very nice to see somebody push the envelope. Um, then thirdly, I would say my favorite, my third look from Minat would have to be... Male? Male, yeah, it would have to be Toby Bakri, honestly. Like, Toby Bakri. When, when, I, when I saw the pink suit, I was like, no, starting video, you know, shout out to you, you know, Mr. Tosi, killing it every time. I was like, no, this is, this is, this is an amazing look. It's a winner's look. I shout out to him for winning. I was, I was very excited. I was stressed to hold my voice. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Those okay. are my Interesting, um, the the three that you chose, um, none of them um, won best, best dress, dress yeah. either male or, or female. female. But we know that's a popularity contest, and you have to go to the African Magic page and actually like, like within yeah. an allotted time. time. I think um, out of the males, um, somebody that I really liked what he wore was um, Kaneng Jr. Oh, yes. Kanaga Jr. Yeah. Yes, I liked um, the whole blue, blue ensemble. Um, the um, whole Agbada looking thing yes. with the cap. Yes. Um, okay. Now let's look at the misses. Mm -hmm. um, um, what, like, three misses? It could be male or female. Uh, misses, definitely. I've started with Emmanuel. Um, he wore, like, a flowery outfit. Okay, so um, I get I get the concept of the outfit. I get what he's trying to do with the outfit, but I don't think it was executed properly. So I think based off on execution, I have to give him, like, a 20%, honestly. Wow. But I, I get the idea of the outfit. They could have toned down the flowers, you know, maybe bring it down a little bit. But overall, I think... It could have done a bit more. A Two bit. more people that were missed. Um, I would say it was really a miss, but like it was very underwhelming. I have to say Choma Good Hair because okay. I was expecting a lot from Choma Good Hair. Choma Good Hair is a fashion icon, like in her rights. Like uh, we expect to see, once, once you see Choma Good Hair outside, you expect to see like an amazing outfit, and I, I, I didn't get that. Like I, like the outfit just wasn't bad. Like I won't lie, but, but someone else. It wouldn't else. make top twenty. Exactly. Like I was like Choma, you can you can do you can do definitely. And your more. third miss. Um, I told Miss would have to be Blue Avia from Big Brother. Um, I get the concept of the outfits. It could have been better. The could have done way, way better. It looked like it was made by like a welder or something. Like it looked, it didn't look as professional. It looked tacky. It didn't look good. It was a nice fit. But apart from that, I, I can't see anything else good about the outfits. I could, I could get what they were trying to go for, but they didn't bring it, okay. honestly. Let me move quickly to Style Infidel. And um, I'd like to get your yes. thoughts on the $20,000, um, <laughs> I believe, Tolu Bali dress yes. that um, Tacha wore. And she came with the receipts all over the internet. Um, was that a $20,000 no. look, in your opinion? And who are your misses? Um, what outfit didn't do it for you on the black carpet? Okay, I'll say this. It's very okay to miss a mark. I mean, she delivered last year in um, Extra Bright Lakes. She did very well last year. And I feel the need to start posting receipts and telling us how expensive your dress is is pretty much a total lapse of taste. Um, I mean, I'd rather probably go for like a vintage LDA, I know that I'm paying that much for that dress, so a vintage Lanvin or something. Don't come and try to convince us as to why we need to love your dress. Mm -hmm. It's fine. You missed the mark this year. There's no... Okay, and your the misses? Would be Emmanuel. I didn't know... Yes, my top three misses would definitely... Number one on my list would be Emmanuel. I didn't know what was going on. I mean, I get the whole direction. If it was to Fashion Week or some fashion events, I think he would have pulled it off. And it's what a lot of celebrities need to know that it's a movie award. There's a dress code. It's formal. They're not even restricting you to black tie. It's a formal. That means you can wear, you can wear our traditional formal looks to the event. So Emmanuel, definitely number one. I didn't know what was going on there. Number two will be, I mean, we just talked about it now. 
would be Tata. It was just too much going on. It was just too much going on. There was strain, there was feathers, there was blings, there was puff sleeves. It was just a whole lot. Like they didn't even take our time to edit it. It was chaotic, very chaotic. Number three on my list would be Beauty to Kura. And who won who best won dress? Best Obviously, dress, based on interesting. And all of that. But that word, that was, oh, tacky. Tacky to the power of 10. It was a mess. You mean her best mess. dress, not the one she received the, um, the award for best dressing? The world is going on here. Okay, I, I heard you saying you, I saw you don't... It was green. It felt like seen... a tacky version of Little Mermaid. <laughs> yes, I, I definitely saw the mermaid theme being um, channeled. And she, Shade. she was, um, I, I think everyone saw like what was meant to be skills mm -hmm. on the side of it. Um, I wanted to get your take on some of the more bizarre looks. I mean, we have people like um, Toyin Lawani. We have people like Ifue Nada. Um, what were those looks? Do you think... Um, they pushed the envelope and they were right for the occasion. Um, okay, so pushing the envelope and being right for the occasion are two very different things. I think right from time, Tony Lawani is always someone that we know to always want to try something daring, want to try something different. But for if for Inada, I think she just enjoyed the attention that comes with her wearing like bizarre outfits. Like, I mean, last year, everyone was talking about outfits, how like you had skulls and masks and everything. Fair. I, I didn't think it was right for the NVC, but I think it was a good outfit. Like, it could have worked for a different kind of event. But this year, I didn't see what the dress was. It looks like a gym water bottle. Like, wow, a gym water bottle. Yeah, like, uh, have you seen those gym water bottles? Like, like, a, like they look like weights. Like, yes. That, that's very by guts. It, didn't, I, it looked very last minute. It looked very tacky. It didn't look nice. It didn't look properly done. On, like, last year, it just actually looked properly done, but it didn't look right for the event. But this year, yeah. it just didn't even look done. It just looked like she wanted to get the attention based off wearing the outfit. It's simple. That's why. Okay. I'll, I'll move to um, Style Infidel. What about the bizarre looks? And um, I think my question to you would be um, we all saw Thames at the Oscars where um, you wear an outfit and it almost uh, becomes a person on its own, taking a whole personality. And the question that always comes up in people's minds in some of these bizarre outfits is, how does this person sit down? Yeah. Um, how, does, um, the, how do the people around them feel about the outfit? So for the AMVCAs, we saw some people with long trains, some people with um, outfits that they could barely move in. Um, is that right? And is that good for fashion in Nigeria? Um, well, I get the part of wanting to be a headliner on the red carpet. So for most people, there's always a plan B and a plan C. So if I get to the carpet with my plan A, do my press, do everything I have to do, and then I go back to change, and I'm not coming back until when it's close to the end. But in this case, I've said it over and over again, AMVCA is not the Met Gala. It's not a costume gala. It is not. I get the part of pushing the boundaries. You can push the boundaries with colors, with cuts, even with design. But you need to understand that it's not a costume gala. It is not. So, I mean, all of that, yes, you want to get on a list, you want to be talked about, but there are better ways to land on a best dress list without necessarily sparking unnecessary debate and all of that. And even if you wanted to wear that, it could have been better done. It could have been tastefully done. It just, it was just to everywhere. It was just to everywhere. In my own critical opinion, that is debatable. But to be honest, I think you really need to understand an event before you step out to the event. Even with me over time, I've come to realize that even with clients, comfort is very key. Comfort, comfort is very key. Uh, and understanding um, the event you're attending is also important. Um, final words on fashion for, I'll say, more movie events coming up. What would you like to see from Nigeria? Oof, um, honestly, like... I have to be very honest with you. Like, I really liked what I saw in the Red this year as opposed to last year. I think this year, the Red was way better than last year. Um, so I would say more originality. I see people trying to infuse our Africanness into, like, the fashion. I like that. Let's keep doing that. Um, let's try to push the envelope. Let's try to tone it down sometimes. Not every time. 
not, not so every... more originality yeah. and more fusion of our local elements. Um, that's all we can take on Robin no Minds. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much for um, having me. Ayolawa, a media personality and industry baby. <laughs> and thank you to celebrity stylist, Style Infidel. <laughs> um, it's been a pleasure you having so you on the show.